Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a 1979 Hitachi Color TV 19 inch model CT979. This was a pickup recently at an estate sale. Uh, was hiding in a closet. Uh, they gave it to me at a very reasonable price, but it was with the stipulation that uh, it was not powered on untested. I don't get to plug it in, whatever. But the price was right, so I decided to take a, uh, a chance on it. So given the fact that everything else in the house is well cared for, there's a fair chance that this could just work. Um, so we're going to open it up, take a look inside, check the CRT if possible, and then fire it up and see what it needs. We can see the back's really simple. It's funny that they have a, a rating of 99 watts here, but an average power of 79 watts. So not sure what that's about, but obviously something there. There's your serial number and your November of 79, made in Taiwan. Uh, Hitachi really started changing their production over to Taiwan sometime around 77. Uh, before 77, it was largely Japan, but then they went to Taiwan because of cost-saving measures. The CRTs really didn't start to decline in quality until about 1982 or 83. Most of these, the CRTs in them are still pretty hot even after hours of use, but uh, let's take a look inside and then let's see if we can test it. Okay, so here she is with the back off. And this is kind of what I expect here. The fuzzy crusto back there. Yeah. Okay, let's reach back here and grab this. We'll get a brush and dust this out. This is a remote control set. You see that you've got the little standby supply there, the remote sensor there. There's the 19 VHW P22. at the neck board here. Neck board looks pretty good. Not a lot of resoldering needs to be done. I am concerned about this uh, gooey crusty stuff here. Not sure what that is. It's like dust mixed with something gross. Let's flip it up and see if I can check out the bottom. So it's got a couple of crummy joints. Like that R617 there, that's pretty garbagey. You can definitely tell that that's breaking loose. The one above it's not great either. Hot chassis. Thankfully, this one's not littered with the purple Matsushita capacitors that a lot of these have. Of course, I don't really have much faith in a Tycon either. Vertical size, sub brightness, controls are very common to these Hitachi sets. Let's see if I can get this board up a little bit more. So even if you bust the two chassis screws loose and you kind of pull this up and away from the locking parts in the cabinet, there's very little room to get it past the CRT. It bumps into the CRT and you can't really get it pa past the, uh, the bump stop there, so that kind of sucks. But just peering down in here, most of the solder looks good except for a few small points which I think I'll just touch up here. So I'm going to resolder a couple of points here, a couple of points down there, and then uh, see if we can test the CRT and if so, great. If not, then we'll just juice it and see what happens. Okay. So it's this guy here for sure. He was pretty crusty looking. This side was just barely hanging on. Gotta try not to cook the crap out of the plastic framework there. And let's see, we've got 
this transistor here, which is looking a little sloppy. This power resistor here. And there's a couple diodes. Anything that looks like it's going to become a problem, we're just going to take care of right now. Still got to dust this out somewhat. This here looks a little crusty. Probably going to be hard for me to show you. But there's one. There's one down here. You probably can't see where I'm going with it. That's really ugly. one over here anything with a little ring around the center tells me the solder starting to break down and I should take care of it but just looking around at this stuff the rest of this is pretty good looking there's one over here I think it was this one that didn't look so appealing to me this one here is kind of cruddy these big power resistors love to heat up and get loose in the power supply, so I'm just going to reflow them as a, a precautionary measure. Anything with edge connectors, definitely. Some of these weren't flowed very well at all. Weren't soldered well from the factory. I just want to make sure they have a good grip. Sometimes the process has too much flux and it goes everywhere. And instead of properly adhering to the board, it doesn't look too much better. But every time I apply heat to it, it just bubbles. So not great. But that looks pretty good for now. Let me get it back upright and we'll see about cleaning the pots and things. Brush this off a little bit first, just because it looks pretty disgusting. I gotta remember to uh, use different terminology for things now, as Shango pointed out in a recent video. So if you look at the YouTube Terms of Service, you're going to be cracking down a lot more on what you say and do in videos which can get you banned or blacklisted and so we can no longer use that three letter word for the uh, display because it stands for critical race theory so instead we have to use picture tube but I'm sure the damage has already been done and you know they'll terminate my account for some silly reason like what happened before got all that super fine dust in it. It was pretty dusty. Yeah, let's whack the CRT and neck it. Great job! Okay, then we got these big old Lovey dovey fuzzies back here. That's a little better. Let me get something to blow it out. You can see the dust particles floating in the air. Take a deep breath. This freeze mist is almost empty, so I'm just going to use it for the air propellant. Okay, 
Let's see if I have an attachment for this CRT after I clean the pots. So again, you're very limited to the amount that you can take this out. And I like the fact that you have a, a hard time clearing the CRT. It gets hung up there on the left. But we'll see what we can manage with that. Maybe you get an extension straw or something like that and make it work a little better. Okay, so we got our CRC here and our extension straw. And I'm just gonna squirt a bunch in here. And then I have to work them all. Because unfortunately, this stuff evaporates like really quick. Take this around at the front, and then we'll just work all these guys. I've learned the CRC works great, but it evaporates very quickly. So you got to spray it in and work all the controls fast. But I like it. It's not as harmful to the carbon as the deoxid is. I've learned that deoxid is starting to wash away the carbon on old pots, so I asked around the people who've been doing it a while and they say, yeah, deoxid's good for cleaning things, but it also cleans too much. So be aware of that. CRC and top it off with some fader lube tends to work really well on old pots. The fader lube doesn't seem to harm it as much. All right, so we got them cleaned up. Let's uh, re-secure our chassis. I don't like that they put the focus inside there where it's difficult to get to, but oh well. Let's see. Got to get this remounted right. It's a cool design the way everything slides out on the chassis, but they, I don't think they thought the uh, I don't think they thought the the cabinet and chassis design through well enough because there's very little clearance to get it past the CRT. Now, if it didn't have the Veractor tuner here, maybe because this said this set did come in multiple variants, one with the Veractor like we have here. One with a rotary style tuner and one with a, a drum style tuner that had, you know, 13 contacts with presets. Uh, let's see. Are these push buttons too? No, these are all touch buttons. And then there's your Veractor adjustments there. All right. So let's see if I have an attachment for this CRT. I don't know if I do or not. But then maybe we'll be able to see its fuzzy condition. awesome right there because the only thing I have here is the Beltron my uh, my others are at the storage unit and I have makeshift adapters for these but we'll see open this up here bear with me a moment And let's see. Yeah, I have a BR26. Come on, focus, focus. No, not going to do it. There we go, BR26. So that may work. Won't know until I try it. Okay. Let's see. Plug this in, and I, it can go either way. There's two different socket selections here. So I've got this one, and I've got another one. Let's test this. Nope, heater doesn't catch, so it's got to be the other one. Let's try this. Nope. Rotate it again, and let's try this. 
No. So none of those selections work. So I don't think I really have an adapter to test this one. Let's just double check and make sure I haven't done anything stupid. There we go. It was off by one pin. And, but that doesn't mean that the gun correct, uh, connections are correct. It just means that I have filament continuity. So let's take a look here. Got filament continuity. And it's lit up in the back here. But I don't see any uh, registration of guns. So it's got a, a CRT with a pinout I don't have an adapter for. But that's okay. We'll just do it by eye. Okay, well it's the big moment. Let me set all the controls. That midpoint. Vertical hold, color, tint, brightness, and picture, which is usually contrast. Got the color lock. It's even got VIR support too, which is you don't see that very often on Hitachi sets, mostly GEs. Okay, let's see if it flies or if it fries. It's a good sign. It's starting to come up. It's got a bit of a stain at the bottom left. But we have a raster. It's kind of a weak raster. Uh, let's see here. It's got a three or four. All right. So definitely have some washed out, fuzzy looking picture. Let's see if that's a function of our fine tuning. Not really. You can crank the color all the way up and it kind of shows. That could just be a purity thing though. I think the CRT is a little tired because when you crank it, it does kind of wash out a little. Definitely some purity stains. Tint range seems to be pretty good. Go to a full rainbow here. Definitely got some purity issues going on. Uh, when you close the door, the AFT goes on. That's pretty common on those. All right, let's go get the degaussing coil and see if we can clean that up a little bit. It's if I adjust the camera, it still looks pretty dead and washed out. All right, so I've got my degaussing coil. And I'm trying to make this show up as best as possible. So we're going to turn this on and go to town on it. Definitely couldn't do this around a hard drive based system. So that's an improvement. We got rid of a lot of the staining. I'm still not too impressed with the overall color reproduction here. Maybe I'll work on that just a little bit more and see if I can work it out some. That's definitely an improvement. You 
can't run these degaussing coils for too long because they draw a lot of current and they get hot. See, I think I just made it worse. All right. I think that's as good as it's getting. So we'll work on that color problem in a little bit. Let's uh, go to a regular cross hatch. And we see that we got way too much black level. Way too much. That could be washing out the color. So I'm going to go back here and adjust the sub brightness pot a little bit. Clean that up. Got a little bit of convergence error there. I can tell the whites on the lines are a little pinkish looking. And the backgrounds are a little bit blue. So we definitely need to work on grayscale a little bit. Convergence error up there. Let's see if we can bring the focus in a little bit better. Yeah, only a tiny bit. This CRT is usable, it's just a little bit tired. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, we're gonna go back here and let me see what they have for drives. Looks like they have a blue drive and a red drive. So let's turn the red drive down a little bit. Get rid of those pinkish lines. And let's back off on the blue to make the grays look a little more grayish. And what I like to do is turn the black level up just enough to where I can see the darks. And then adjust the backgrounds for that if I don't have a full setup switch. So that's better looking. So let's see if with a grayscale we get better looking color bars. They're still a little on the weak side. If I turn the color lock on, that puts the eyeball in circuit there. Automatically adjusts stuff. But the colors just seem weak to me. Obviously we have to use uh, an actual broadcast for it to figure itself out. Let's see where our vertical size is. This, a lot of these were over scanned. Oh, lots over scanned. Holy crap. There we go. Now I can see the top and bottom. Okay. And let me just peer around in here and see if there's anything related to sub color or tint. Yeah, there's lots of tweaking adjustments. Uh, but let's get this on broadcast first because my generator is not always accurate and I want to make sure that the picture looks nice. Okay, so looking down in here, there's not a whole lot of picture adjustments. Uh, I'm not sure what tint and color setup, and I think that's for the VIR system. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, let's see, we got subcontrast, AGC, horizontal sync, which is that guy over there. I'm not going to mess with that. But there's no. No pots and things for uh, color and brightness. So I suppose I could see if that's like a, a baseline. But uh, really the two problems we're coming out with right now is excessive contrast. It's just blanking like crazy. And uh, no, real, no real color. Like this is the default position for contrast, which is just stupid bright. 
and there's like there's no everybody's washed out it looks just kind of cruddy so yeah I don't like that I'm gonna see if I can turn down that uh, subcontrast pot which is down here I'm using an insulated tool that makes it worse okay that's about average to my eyes although the camera's still blinking that brought our color back though which is interesting because the reds are nice and red down here although we can't really tell yet with the the flesh tones in this terrible video it's starting to look a little more normal but uh definitely let's back off here on the fine tuning now the whites look a little bit too green to me let's uh, let's turn the color down that's our contrast tint all right yeah color off the whites look a little bit green to me this camera just does not do it justice that's better a little bit more white now that it's been on for a while the tubes getting brighter so I guess it is it's it's waking up the color looks better now God, I wish you there we go look at that much better that looks about normal flesh tones look good yeah it's pretty decent looking now cool let's button this thing back up all right so all button back up it's looking pretty good now it definitely doesn't like being rotated you can see I got a little bit of a purity stain there again but when it was uh, in the other direction it didn't have a problem so it's got a pretty good picture on it black and white looks black and white even with the subcontrast down it still is pretty bright so I think the CRT is coming around Flush tones look good. Nice and bright. Definitely makes the camera blank out a lot. So, yeah. I think this one's good. Can't hardly watch anything on it because it's like blanking the camera out. Yeah, it's bright. Oh yeah, that's the new thing. They're going to force uh, all San Diegans to have organic waste cans and pay for them regardless of whether you use them or not. I think that's pretty crummy. I'm all about recycling and using that stuff and I use it for the compost in my garden, but... I don't think I should be forced to have a service that I'm not going to utilize. Blinky blinky. Anyways, so that was a nice quick repair video. I think I'm just going to enjoy this one for a little bit, let it run in the shop. It's hard to see the picture because the camera keeps blanking out, keeps trying to focus on it. It's a pretty bright, clear CRT. It didn't start out that way, so I think it was just slumbering for a while. But yeah. I had a 13-inch version of this, uh, so now I got a 19-inch version.
whoop-de-doo. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. More stuff to come.